In this week's experiment, we're going to be analyzing a sample of solid iron ore for its iron content using the relationships that we developed last week. Now, I'm not going to go through and, and do a straight up iron, con uh, iron calculation, so let's do one for copper instead. It's the same process, it's just a different metal and different, different value range. So. If we take a 0.3462 gram sample of copper ore and digest it in acid, diluting in water to 100 milliliters of total volume, that's pretty much the same process you're using for your iron ore. Uh, we're going to make an, a solution that I'm going to call the unknown copper stock. If we take that unknown copper stock and make four replicate samples by uh, pipetting one milliliter of that stock uh, into some mixture of chemicals that forms a colored solution and then diluting to 50 milliliters. Uh, we can read those at 542 nanometers and determine their absorbance. Again, this is copper, but you know, this looks awful familiar uh, compared to what you're doing in lab. Okay, so let's take a look at last week's results. So this is just my series of copper standards. Uh, we did these in lab last week. Uh, I've got my concentrations, I've got my absorbances, and I graph them, fit a line to it. So now we're gonna use this relationship to measure the absorbance of an unknown solution and determine the concentration of copper in that solution. All right, there are my unknowns. Um, prepared them all, read them at 542 nanometers, and sample one, two, three, four, there are my absorbances. You see that they're all pretty close. They look like they're uh, very consistently prepared, but there is a little bit of variance in those samples. One thing that often trips people up is why are we preparing multiple samples? If I'm just analyzing one ore sample. Why not just make one ore sample? I'll let you think about that for a while. So to start, let's look at sample one. So I just moved my linear fit information from the graph over here. And sample number one had an absorbance of 4.497 that I can plug in and solve for the copper concentration in sample number one. So there we've got sample number one, four times 10 to the minus fourth molar, but we wanna figure out the copper concentration or the percent copper, which is just a concentration in the solid ore that we're using. So how do we take this number, which is a concentration of this multi-step preparation and get to the ore concentration? Well, let's think about how we prepared that sample. We prepared sample one by taking one milliliter of our stock and reacting it with some things and then diluting it to 50 milliliters. So the concentration in this one milliliter was, relatively speaking, very high compared to this 50 milliliter. Or another way of thinking about that is all of the copper in this 50 milliliter sample one that we prepared came from one milliliter of the stock. So we can do that calculation with just, you know, as I say down here, a modified C1, V1 equals C2, V2 um, dilution calculation. Plug in our values and we can get that our copper stock was 0 0.02064 molar. Now, one little extra note, I've got too many sig figs on all these numbers, but that's okay because I'm in the middle of a process and when we're in the middle of a math process, we always want to keep extra sig figs and just round at the end. In addition to that, because we're doing actual lab data here, we're probably going to be rounding using the error in our replicates rather than rounding using sig fig rules. So keep that in mind as we get towards the end of the slide. All right, so we know the concentration of the unknown stock. And there are a couple ways we can go on, on this calculation. This is just one way through. If we know the concentration, we can figure out how many moles of copper were in that solution. And from the moles of copper, we can figure out grams of copper that we had. So there's my stock concentration. I can just 
multiply that by the volume and get how many moles of copper I had. Once I know moles of copper, I can look up the, the molecular weight or the atomic weight on the periodic table, and I can get grams of copper. So this is how many grams of copper were in that unknown stock solution. And remember, we made that stock solution from all of the copper ore in our sample. So this many grams of copper were present in our entire copper ore sample. So that's not too bad. The copper ore we said had a mass of 0.3462 grams. 0.1312 grams of that was copper. So figuring out a percent, don't make this harder than it has to be, right? Percents are the same in any context. Sometimes when you're in a chem lab, people try to make them into something harder than they are. But if I've got that much copper in that much total sample, then I can figure out the percent, 37.9% copper in that ore. So that gets me the first result that I'm looking for. Now go back and let's do the rest of them. I'm not going to show those. I crunched through all the numbers and this is what I came up with for percent copper using the same process for all of them. We don't want to report four numbers. Uh, we want to report a reliable number and that reliable number in this case is probably the average of these. Again, these all look pretty consistent. None of them look too far out of bounds. Average of those, I didn't show how to calculate an average. You know how to do that is 38.0% copper and here's where we've got um, the error treatment coming in. For this type of a data set, range over two error um, is fine. So the highest value minus the lowest value divide by two gives me an error of 0.25. I'm going to round that to a single digit and then I'm going to round this number to the same digit rounded here. So this should be reported as 38.0 plus or minus 0.3% copper in this ore sample. So that's a quick run through of do this type of a calculation. Again, I did this example using copper. You're doing an iron ore, so it's going to be the same. Some of the numbers are going to shift around a little bit. All right, get out there, get this calculated, and uh, let us know when you have any questions.